I was on holiday recently and we went to a little cabin out in the woods. There was no cell phone signal there and so we had pretty much no connectivity. However, the owners of the cabin did provide internet access via a router connected to an ADSL connection. Now I always hate using other people's internet connections. I have no idea how secure they are. I've no idea if they've got anything set up to capture what is being done. And I just generally feel unsafe. Now on my own device, I could then install a VPN to secure everything and that'd work just fine. But I was there with the whole family. It gets quite awkward asking them to install VPNs and other security software on every single device that they've brought with them. There is a better solution. Using a Raspberry Pi, you can build yourself a little travel router that everyone can then connect to and that apply all of the security. Let me show you how. Hello once again, Pi Geeks and techno nerds all around the world. My name's Jeff and I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for over 30 years. I've been using Raspberry Pi since they first came out and I wanted to share with you some of the projects that I've done over the years. If you like what you see on this channel, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on with this project and if you've got any ideas for other projects you'd like to see me do in the future, put those in there as well. Now, whether you're at an airport, in a cabin, or just generally anywhere where there's a remote internet connection, you can secure it by installing something like a VPN on your device and connecting using that. And that's fine. But if there's a bunch of you, like what I was saying, where I had my whole family there in a cabin, it can all get a little bit tricky getting everyone to install that VPN, especially if there are restrictions on the number of devices that you can use if it's a paid for service. So I find a better solution is to use a small travel router. Now everyone can then connect to that and use it as if it were their normal internet router. You can then apply all the security you want on that router's connection. So when it then connects to the internet provider that is offered to you, be it over Wi-Fi or a wired connection, all of your data will be secure because you're going through this VPN layer in the middle. Now, not all travel routers offer this ability to inject a VPN connection into the middle. They only offer the basic routing functionality where you can connect to the travel router and then it can then send on all of those requests over the internet connection. So I found by building my own, using freely available software, on a Raspberry Pi, it was a great solution. Now here, I'm gonna be using the Rasp AP software. I found it to be really great, but there are a whole bunch available out there. So please don't think this is the only one available. And let me know in the comments if you find one that works even better. But let's get going and I'll show you how to put this together. Just like with most Raspberry Pi projects, the best place to start is normally the Raspberry Pi OS. And I'm just going to use Raspberry Pi Imager to flash the OS image onto an SD card. Firstly, I just choose my device, in this case a Raspberry Pi 4. Then I pick the operating system. And in this case, I want the light version of Raspberry Pi OS. So I come down to Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then I select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. Then choose Storage, which is my SD card. And I hit Next. Here I can apply some predefined settings such as hostname and Wi-Fi settings, those kind of things. And then I just click yes. And yes, I'm sure I want to continue. It will go off and now it will flash that OS image onto the SD card. It will take a little while, so I'll just come back when that's done. OK, now the OS is built, so I just need to take the SD card, pop it into the Raspberry Pi and then boot it up. So now the Pi is booted and everything's looking good. But there is one thing I want to do before I go much further. When I was in the cabin, I was finding that the Raspberry Pi's internal Wi-Fi adapter isn't actually very powerful. But that's what I was trying to use as the access point. But unless everyone in the family was pretty much all in the same room, they were finding it hard to connect. Even only one or two internal walls were enough to block the signal, and they were struggling to connect from everywhere in the cabin. To work around that, I'm going to be using this. 
It's an external USB Wi-Fi adapter. Now this particular one is for Wi-Fi 6. In a prior video, I went through how to download and install the drivers for this and get it working on a Raspberry Pi. Now, if I went through all of that process here, I'd really just be repeating everything that's in that video. So if you need to go through that, take a look at this video here and then just come back to this point in this video. I'll have chapter markers laid out so you can come straight back. And now I've got my Wi-Fi adapter connected. I've got all the drivers loaded. And as you can see here on my Raspberry Pi, I now have my WLAN 1 device all set up. So now we can go and take a look at the actual Raspberry Pi software. Here on raspberrypi.com, there's a quick start guide that you can use just to grab the software. So all I need to do now is grab this line here and then run it on my Raspberry Pi. Now through most of this installer, I'm just going to be accepting the default answers. There is only one part of the installer where I won't be doing that. But certainly for the installation directory, I'll just take the default for that. Confirm that those values are OK. I will enable HTTP only for session cookies. I'll enable the Raspberry Pi control service. And I'll enable the TCP BBR congestion control algorithm, whatever that is. And this is where we start to get into some of the more value add features of Raspberry Pi. It's got a really good ad blocking system that's kind of the same as Pihole built into it. So I definitely want that. And I want to be able to support open VPN configurations. Raspberry Pi also has an API built into it that you can use to interact with it. Personally, I use the GUI all the time, but there's no harm in installing the API. I will also install WireGuard, although I won't be using it in this particular example. But if you are a fan of WireGuard, you can tell here that it is built in and it's just another VPN system that you can use. Raspberry Pi also has support for third party VPN providers where you'd pay a subscription to them. Now, in my case, I've got a NordVPN subscription, so I'm going to select option three here. And finally, it asks you to reboot. So let's do that. And now everything's rebooted. We should be able to access the web UI of Raspberry Pi. And here we can see it's prompted me for the credentials. The default username is admin and the default password is secret and you can change this later on. And here you can see the initial UI. Now let me take you through how to configure the system. Now the first thing I want to do here is switch the hotspot so that it's using WLAN 1 rather than WLAN 0. In order to do that all I've got to do is go over to the hotspot option here on the left and then in the interface drop down I can change that to WLAN 1. I then want to change the SSID of the network that it advertises for you to connect to. I'm just going to make that PITS and the wireless mode, I'm going to make 1102.11ac 5 gigahertz. And by default, that goes to channel 36. In the security tab, you can then change the password of the Wi-Fi. I'm just going to set that to password one. But obviously, you'd want to use something that's a lot more secure than that. After this, you can just hit save settings and then restart hotspot. Now everything's restarted. And if I go back to the dashboard, you can see in the top right now, it's saying WLAN 1 is up. If I switch back to the terminal and I run IP add show, you can see now that WLAN 1 has got this IP address of 10.9.141.1. It's effectively going to be acting as a DHCP server on that private network. So now let's try to connect to the router and see what happens. So here I've got the Raspberry Pi web page on the left and on the right you can see my phone screen. You can see that the PITS network is available. So all I've got to do is select it. And now you can see that I'm connected successfully. So now I'll bring up a browser and let's see if it will work. And yes, indeed, I've been able to navigate to my YouTube channel with absolutely no problem. So the Raspberry Pi software is working really, really well. Now let's look at some of the more advanced features. The first thing I want to do here is connect OpenVPN. Now I run an OpenVPN server at home, so I can connect straight through to that would mean that any device that connects to my Raspberry Pi router would then be routing all of its network traffic through my home network. Because I know that is all nice and secure, and all the traffic would be encrypted, 
It means that I know that all of the devices that access the Raspberry Pi would also be nice and secure. So everyone would be safe. So all we have to do to do this, click on Open VPN on the left, come down to Configuration File, then click on the Choose File button, and then navigate to wherever you've got an Open VPN configuration file lying around on your PC. Once you've got that selected, all you have to do is hit Save Settings, and then hit Start Open VPN. And here you can see now that the VPN is up. So now any browsing that I do on my phone will be going through that open VPN connection and back through my home network, no matter where I am in the world. Now it also means I could do something like connect a Roku streaming stick or an Amazon Fire TV device to my Raspberry Pi router. And then I'd have access to all of the British shows, no matter where I am in the world and be able to access everything on my home media server. But what if you don't have your own VPN connection and instead you use one of the commercially available ones? Well, Raspberry Pi has got you covered there too. So firstly, I'm going to stop my open VPN connection on Raspberry Pi. And instead, I'm going to flip over to NordVPN. Now I have a subscription with NordVPN, so I can create a VPN connection to anywhere in the world. Now, before I can make use of this, I need to install the NordVPN software onto my Raspberry Pi. So I'll go off and do that and come back. So now NordVPN is all connected and all I have to do is go to this country drop down and just pick a country that I want to connect to. In this case, I'll pick Australia. Then I just have to hit save settings. And now I'm connected to Australia via NordVPN. If I switch over back to my phone and I now navigate to IPlocation.net, you can see here that it now thinks we're in Australia. And indeed, any device that connects to my Raspberry Pi router will do. So there you go. You can have your very own little travel router that you can use to secure yours and all of your family's data while you're away from home. By using either a third party VPN provider, in my case NordVPN, or your own VPN that you've set up using OpenVPN or WireGuard, you can connect back to your home country and have all of your devices then get access to all of those local resources. It's a really great system, and I'm certainly going to be taking it with me wherever I go in the world. But that's it for this video. If you like what you see here, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on setting up your own Raspberry Pi router. And as always, if you've got any ideas for other projects that you'd like to see me do here on the channel, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks so much for watching till the end. And until next time, bye for now.